This episode of the Restoration Today podcast is brought to you by One Claim Solution. Did you know it takes about 45 days for most contractors to get paid for an emergency services job and some report much worse wait times? Either way, that's a long time to get paid, especially with the stresses of keeping up with payroll and overhead costs. One Claim Solution is an insurance billing solution that not only gets the clients paid in 32 days on average, but also improves profitability and handles all communication with adjusters. You deserve to work with a specialist that has well-trained attorneys and staff, proprietary purpose-built technology, and rigorous time-proven processes needed to deliver a best-in-class insurance billing capability. One Claim Solution will handle it all so you can focus on what matters most, running your business. Visit OneClaimSolution.com for more. Hey there, thanks for checking out this special episode of the Restoration Today podcast. We are at the Interconnect Conference in LA where it is not as warm as I'd hoped being in LA in January, but it's fine. It's only like 15 degrees warmer than it is in Michigan. Where it's are you from? It's a little from? chilly, Arizona. That's right. Phoenix That's area. Right. So is it surprisingly, it's about the same temperature in Phoenix right now. A little chilly today. What is the normal temperature in Phoenix right now? Right now, 70. Yeah, that sounds... It's great. Great. Yeah. yeah. This time of year, it's fantastic. Although Michigan's warm and we have no snow, so I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I am joined by Josh M. Key. He is one He is one of the co-founders of um, One Claim Solution, and I've had the pleasure of getting to know some of his team over the last few months. They are kind of taking the industry by storm. I would say you've been around for a while, but making yeah. a big splash now and so they have a booth here at interconnect and i've gotten to work with them over the last few months on some content and other things so i'm excited to have josh here and talk about what is one of the biggest pain points in the industry and that is getting paid on your claims right it's a huge problem so that's josh, the rumor <laughs> that's the rumor thanks for joining me go ahead and kind of introduce yourself and share a little bit about your background sure thank you michelle so uh i'm an attorney um outside of law school um i became a, a general counsel for an air ambulance billing company that uh, focused on fixed wing air ambulance flights. Very expensive stuff. Huh. Um, very specific. Very specific. And and it was great. I learned a lot. Kind yep. of opened my eyes to a different different industry, different way to practice law. Uh, and uh, some things were happening in that industry that I just didn't feel quite right about. Okay. With, with how things were being billed and sure. charged. And and uh, so I got out of that industry and into this industry. Had, had a buddy that uh, needed some help. Uh-huh. And... I said, "Hey, I'll try it." Mm-hmm. I'm used to working with insurance companies, and yep. and and it worked. And I kind of had to take a step back and be like, "Okay, what's going on with this industry? How come there's nobody else filling this space? Yes, what's going on? What's what are the the hurdles? Right? Yeah, kind of keeping people out of the barriers. And uh, it, it's been a wild ride that that started in about 2014. Okay. So talk about One Claim Solution, OCS. Talk about what where your niche is in the process of getting paid. So One Claim Solution, there's a there, there's a difference between a billing agency and a yep. collection agency. Yep. Okay. While I am an attorney, <laughs> uh, OCS, we call OCS One Claim Solution, uh, is a billing agency, okay. it's not a collection agency. Not uh, end of the line. Right. Yes. We can do some collection work. Okay. We try to stay away from it and focus on the billing side of it, right? The only time you're going to get into collections is, is you know, if a homeowner or a policyholder receives the check from the insurance company and for whatever reason decides to keep it. Um, <laughs> and and so when that happens, happened. we'll we'll kind of step into the shoes of a collection agency okay. when we need to. Uh, but we're also really good at just avoiding that. So, <laughs> so that that's the gist of it. Uh, we are a billing agency, just like a a medical, uh, you know, uh, a doctor's yeah. office or something like that would have their own billing agency. The yeah. doctors aren't the ones doing the billing. Right. They know where their time is better spent and what they're good at. And so they hire people that are trained up in the insurance negotiations and dealing with insurance companies to do that. That's that's what we are in the restoration right. space, and uh, we do not create invoices. Uh, we we stay away from that on purpose. So yep. uh, when a contractor does their work, they create the invoice, they submit it. Instead of submitting it to the insurance company, they submit it to us. And we take it from there and submit a pretty package with a bow on it, just how the insurance companies like to see it. And we follow up from step one uh, with the insurance company until the contractor gets a check in their hand. So what happens in that process if there's pushback from an adjuster or somebody else on the carrier, maybe any window in there before the the final payment. Yeah. So as you know, Michelle, the, the relationship between restoration contractors 
and insurance adjusters and insurance companies is adversarial by nature. Yes. We, we're trying to collect money. Insurance companies are trying to pay less money. Yep. Um, and, and at least make sure that it's reasonable, right? Yep. And so that's really where where OCS comes in is is they take the emotion out of that negotiating yeah. process. Yep. We're able to reach agreements with adjusters. We provide the justifications, whether it's through the, the S-500, whether it's through OSHA or yep. other state laws. We're familiar and versed in those things. And so we're able to work with those adjusters, provide them the information they need in order to support their payments that they're issuing out. Yep. So if they can document their files with the right type of justifications, it makes paying yes. uh, those line items easier. You still have adjusters that take paying things yeah. very personally, <laughs> and that will always exist yes. in this industry. And uh, we we deal with those situations with kid gloves. We know that if we have one bad interaction with an adjuster today for you, yeah, I might come into contact with that same adjuster tomorrow for another contractor. And so yeah. me blasting that adjuster and beating her over the head with justifications on this day might not work out so well the next day. Might so. not. So how often are you coaching even the contractors then on the right documentation and stuff? Because you must have a lot that you want to collect and you can't, they can't just submit an invoice with no photos, no documentation of everything that they did, right? Especially because you're mostly on the mitigation side and are, is it like moisture readings, all those, all that documentation needs to be in there, right? That's right. And and it's the emergency services side. So mitigation, pack outs, yep. asbestos, mold, all of that stuff. And so when we, when we first sign up a contractor, we'll sit down and do a pretty extensive review and analysis of their right. documentation and their processes. We look at it, see uh, see what we can do to help them improve that, that will help us on the back end be able to collect better. Yep. You know, uh, With the insurance company, we'll look at their work authorizations, make sure that they have what they need in that work authorization to be able to give us the tools we need in order to work directly with the carrier and make sure that that check gets into the contractor's hand. So, uh, and, and through that, through that process, we'll look at the contractors invoices and make sure that, that, uh, they're hitting the current trends. I mean, we, we represent contractors throughout the country. So we're yeah. able to recognize these trends and see what's being paid, what's not, what needs mm -hmm. to be justified in order to get those paid. And, uh, so we've got a whole team that they're all trained up on those. So we see the trends and we're able to adjust to those very quickly, a lot faster than, than a contractor can on their own. So what are you finding is kind of the normal um, time it takes to get paid in full for a contractor on average without help versus with help? So there's there's a lot of variance in that, sure. Michelle. There's some contractors that do fantastic at yep. it. Um, it takes their attention away from growing their business, but they're great at it. Sure. So, but uh, on average, we would probably see it somewhere between 45 and 60 days. Okay. To, to be able to get yep. payment from the carrier. Yep. And those are on like, yeah, mitigation and contents claims. Correct. And so what about, um, do you help with the larger loss or commercial claims or do you stick within this niche that you know, well, things get more complex kind of they, they can get more complex with the larger losses if if our contractor lands one of those larger losses we have the capability to handle those we've dealt, dealt with hotel losses casino losses okay. uh, you know upwards yeah. of you know 500,000 type mitigation losses sometimes up bigger but yeah it's it's all the same laws it's the same principles it's it, it's the same arguments so so this original contractor friend that came to you what exactly did the contractor friend say was their pain point like i can't <laughs> get paid on water jobs or what yes it was you know it takes forever to get the insurance company to to give payment issue yeah. payment it's always less than what we want uh we don't really have the time to be spending on that um and uh and so they came to me and, and asked just if i could help them out on a specific claim that was pretty old mm -hmm. and uh and that was their pain point so when i saw that pain point and i looked at it you know there's some other things in the industry that kind of caught my eye uh -huh. um with how things were being used uh, with how insurance companies were using exactimate sure um, fantastic tool love exactimate it is a tool um, and uh, there's certain things with how Xactimate is used that that caught my attention there, and so we we work with that. Okay. Um, I don't want to get too far into specifics that's on, on Xactimate. No, that's um, fair. But uh, it's it's a great tool. It really is. Yes. And if it's used correctly, it can absolutely help facilitate and streamline the payment process with the carrier. Are all of the most of the contractors that work with you are they using Xactimate to create their 
scopes because there are some other platforms or there are people that just do tnm or whatever that may be although that's usually bigger jobs i think but right there are uh it's about 50 50 okay with our contractors it really is right down the middle some of them use exactmate others use other programs or even just a, like a quickbook yeah. style invoice yeah. you know or you know write it down like that but still you're going to follow the same pricing points and everything that exactimate would otherwise be so so talk about the difference between um if you're helping a contractor who is getting paid through a tpa versus they got this work independently and i apologize because obviously i know the answer to some of these questions so you can <laughs> you know all good all good so the uh the right contractor for ocs right where we can really help them out is the yep. contractor that is they are looking to uh, be flexible with their you yeah. know, innovation and with how they, they do water mitigation losses. Um, but it, the specific type of contractor is one that um, gets most of their work from uh, self-generated lead sources, whether mm -hmm. it's plumbers or uh, Google, word of mouth, other internet type of marketing, sure. lead generation like that, um, don't fit really well with the, with the program vendors or, or the TPA vendors uh a lot of our contractors get some work so there's some aspect of their work sure. they might get from you know sensitive referral sources like adjusters or uh, carriers directly agents um, other tpa programs when that happens we don't we don't really touch those yeah don't want to bite the hand that feeds you yeah and so we stay away from that but uh, it's when you have these other um lead sources that you can charge your your real mm -hmm. pricing on and your real invoice amount then then send those to us and we handle that completely. And that's kind of the, the fit that, that we have in the industry. So I'm curious if you're seeing kind of, um, I've seen a shift in the industry of a lot more contractors going toward the commercial large loss work and moving away from residential, which I think is leaving a huge opportunity for residential work. And there's platforms like you or a homie that works on sending out um, the $10,000 or less claims to contractors. They have their own network, those kind of things that are going on. So how can this type of resource be helping contractors not like these type of jobs can be profitable and there is a place for them and homeowners need contractors that are willing to do the residential work. So how can this maybe help encourage contractors to step back into that space if they've tried to get out of residential work? You know, a lot of, a lot of the reasons why contractors have maybe decided to step away from the residential work was because it wasn't just the actual mitigation work that they were doing. That was a headache, right. Or yes. dealing with the homeowners. It was also dealing with the carrier. Yep. Um, one of the, one of the first contractors I ever billed for located out of Tucson, Arizona, uh, is an older gentleman character. Love the guy. Uh, <laughs> but he was on his way out. Okay. He, he had had enough and he was going to be one of those going to probably switch over to the larger losses or just get out all together. Okay. And, uh, and, and he's told me countless times, man, when you guys came in and you took that aspect of my business away from me, it was yeah. such a headache. I had no idea how negatively it impacted my life. And by taking that out, I love what I do again. I'm able to focus on my customers and just know that at the end of the day, I'm going to get paid because you guys handle that. And you guys did it better than I did anyways. I think that this has to be the number one frustrating point for contractors. I think it, it, it has to be getting paid is, and I just had a contractor write an article about how I think contractors have almost lost their patience as well with having conversations with adjusters and walking through being kind of an educator on the process and what it looks like now contractors only have the bandwidth for so much, right? So. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, with this industry as, as others, there's, there's ebbs and flows, right? There's, yeah. there's periods of time where it's really busy and periods of yes. time where it's super slow. And so if you're staffed up for those busy times and you have your office people that are there for the busy times, well, when it's slow, what do you do with those people? Yeah. And so that's, that's one of the other things is being able to help a contractor control that necessary and unnecessary overhead, yeah. especially when it comes to their accounts receivable departments um, is, is something that we have found to be very beneficial too. So have you seen, if contractors are getting paid faster, does that mean they're able to take on more jobs, more work, be more efficient within their company? So that's a good question. And uh, that go, goes back to your question you asked earlier about what do we typically see contractors turnaround time yeah. before they come to us? Yep. I told you 45 to 60 days. Our turnaround time is averaging right around 32 days. And so with that faster turnaround time does come increased cash flow. Mm -hmm. Cash is king. Mm -hmm. And when you're trying to harness those uh, those referral sources and partnerships, you've got to be able to have the capital and the means to be able to 
pay for those referral sources. Yes. And so when you're able to get those those increased funds coming in sooner, it changes everything for these contractors. It makes yeah. them more flexible. It makes them makes them feel like they can actually go out and grow their companies and mm -hmm. focus on on that aspect of it. And those are the ones that we love to see. Yeah. We love to see a contractor comes in takes them the increase in time that they have, takes the increase in revenues that they're receiving from these losses, and they reinvest both the time and money into growing their businesses. We love that. It's a it's a great fit and we we love being part of that with them. Have you grown relationships with a lot of the carriers over the years as well then? Like have good relationships with the carriers and getting paid? I believe that we have. Yes. Yeah. So again, it, it a lot of times it comes down to adjuster specific. Sure. But by and large, um we do work really hard to try to have relationships with insurance carriers. Um, and there are a handful where it's, it's literally a, Hey, same thing as last time. Yep. We kind of have that routine down. We yep. understand each other. We respect their position. They respect our position and we've been able to reach a happy middle ground. Those ones come out really fast. Sure. And those are great. And, and ultimately we'd like to get to that spot in the industry with, with everybody, you know, it's, it's not about this, adversarial relationship all the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's about reasonableness, reasonableness from the carrier side, yes. reasonableness from the contractor side. There's, there's bad actors all over the industry. And, and really what we're about trying to do is bring accountability, you know, to the carriers, but that also comes by way of bringing accountability yeah. to our contractors and making sure that they're doing the right things. Yes. Okay. If people want to learn more about OCS, where do they find you? I know CNR is one of the answers, but there's more direct answers than that. I was going to say, go to <laughs> CNR. That's, that's the best place. Uh, no, you've got uh, uh, CNR obviously is the good one. You can also go to one claim solution, all singular, mm -hmm. uh, all spelled out one claim solution.com. Okay. It has all of our information there and uh, you can, you can get in contact with us that way. Perfect. And be on the lookout for some of their articles. They've had articles that, that have been on the CNR website. So you can go on there and search for One Claim Solution or search for Josh. He's author of, I think, both articles that are up there. And I think so. I guess. Well, Josh, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I really have enjoyed working with you and looking forward to continuing to work with you and see you guys help more and more contractors. Absolutely. Thank you, Michelle. Keep up the good work. For more restoration today and the latest news, visit our website, cnrmagazine.com and find the latest episodes of the Restoration Today podcast on your favorite podcasting platform.